everyone. Thanks for joining us. Amber is with me this time. Hi. I'm so, hey, Amber. Hi. How are you? Hello. I'm well. How are you today? I'm doing good. Good. Yeah. So, hey, everybody in chat. Um, I We see you guys. Thanks for chatting and joining us. Um, so basically, as the title says, we are going to be discussing a recent interview um, on a channel. Her channel is Truth and Transparency. I linked the original interview in the description. Um, she interviewed Dylan Tallman, who was close with Chris Watts in... Um, you know, Dodge Correctional Facility in Wisconsin. Um, so that interview, the, you know, information that Dylan gave is what we're going to be kind of going over and giving you guys a rundown of today. Mm -hmm. And anyone who wants to see that interview themselves, um, I'll link, I know you put in the description, I'll just link it right now in chat as well. So this is just the um, interview, Truth and Transparen Transparency did with Dylan who knows Chris, still continues to talk to Chris, um, and yeah, basically one of the closest people to Chris at the moment. And hi, Allison. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Mama Bear. Um, Wendy, Mark, everybody in chat, thanks for being here. If I don't call you out, I still see you. Yes. Most and I see, man, everybody. Yes. Yeah, we do see you guys. Um so hello to all of you and thank you. Thank you for chatting with us. And, um, you know, t just talking about the Watts case, you know, you know, Amber and I understand that Chris confessed. He is in prison for life for the murder of his pregnant wife and his two daughters. Um, we understand that. But when you have someone who was very close with Chris, calls Chris his brother, there's proof that they are close um, saying some of the things that we're going to talk about that he said. It's something that we can't help to discuss. I mean, Amber and I still are very deeply embedded into this case. We still have questions. Some people don't, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're going to discuss it. And so we just appreciate everybody staying respectful to that. And while we're not on here saying there's an open investigation or we know for a fact Chris didn't act alone, we think he didn't act alone, but we, can we prove it? No, we have evidence that leads us that way. Um, but basically, yeah, just please stay respectful in chat. Um, we're not saying this case is open. There's going to be any arrests, anything like that. We don't know, um, but we are still going to discuss it. So that's my little... And I think it's also important that um, before we get started. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just add a little bit more real quick that um, Lifetime is doing a show themselves on what, what's it called? What's it called? Um, Cellmate Secrets. Cellmate Secrets. So basically, if Lifetime is reaching out to this Dylan character and I, I, is Cato going to be on that? Yeah, Cadel is, and then Dylan's ex, um, Chris, Chris, I can't remember if it's Krista or Chrissy. They were engaged. Chrissy. Yeah. So basically, if Lifetime uh, Chrissy, is doing okay. their, their uh, own. They broke up um, now, but. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Dylan did say mm -hmm. that. He's single and he's looking to mingle, basically, if anyone's interested. <laughs> right. Um, but if Lifetime is looking into people who talk to Chris and they want to highlight people close to Chris in their statements about Chris. I mean, this is, this case is just always going to be talked about and the lifetime obviously did their homework and knew who talked to them for real and who hasn't. So we're just basically going to be commenting on, you know, people who are close to Chris and that's what lifetime is basically doing. And we'll probably talk about that show too, as soon as it airs. But basically, like you said, mm -hmm. we're not saying that um, there isn't an open investigation or that we know things that we don't, that we can't prove, basically. So that's basically all I wanted to say is if mm -hmm. Lifetime is that are looking into these people and, um, you know, having them on, then to me, I think that's significant, the connection that they have to Chris. Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, on the Lifetime one, I know it, I think Chrissy is going to be on it um, as well. And basically he said that they broke up, that she 
chose media over him. He had to threaten her with a lawsuit to get back the, um, I, I guess, copies of their book that he had written with Chris, kind of like a, I think it's like a book of Bible verses type thing. Um, so yeah, they're not together anymore. And I think that Lifetime show is airing sometime this month of June. Yeah, it airs, um, I think, either June. Yes, either the 25th or the 26th. I thought 26th, but somebody said 25th. So 25th or 26th. Okay, and you know, they'll replay it on repeat or whatever. But thank you, Sunny Robinson. Mm -hmm. And hello, Kelly Brown. Thanks for being here, Florida. Yes, thank you so much, Sunny. Um. So basically, um, I also want to say that in addition to the interview he did on Truth and Transparency's channel, he also did a like eight minute live on Facebook Live through his sister's um, Facebook last night. I watched that this morning. It's um, public. So if you can find her, you can watch it. Okay, the 25th. Thank you, guys. So. He also did a little interview just talking to the camera about a couple things. So I guess it's not an interview, but yeah, he just <laughs> talked to the camera about a few mm -hmm. things. We'll talk about that as well. Yeah, so. and her name is Crystal Tallman as well. If you look her up on Facebook, like you mm -hmm. said, it, the um, interview, his statement is live on her Facebook. So if you guys want to watch that, that is also available. Yes, and Florida, the good thing about the cellmate secrets, um, it's not going to be like a reenactment of anything. It's going to be actual interviews um, with, I believe, Dylan and um, Chrissy. So it, it's not going to be like a reenactment. So that is good. And from the articles, I mean, they think Chris is innocent of the murders. Um, Dylan thinks Chris is innocent. The media is wrong. They law enforcement didn't do their jobs and that Chris, his brother, he calls him is not a monster and there's a lot more to it. And that Chris is innocent. Um, so thank you. And thank you so very much. much. Yeah. Thank and you. Mama bear. We have lists or we have linked her channel in the description spot and I've linked the video um, specific to what we're talking about. You're more than welcome to link the interview again in chat in case people missed it. I mean, it's the right thing to do to give credit. So that's no problem at all to do that. I agree. Yeah, we're talking about it. So I, I think definitely we need to, you know, give credit. So go ahead um, and link as you wish. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, Sunny. Yeah, we just, yeah, we just want to continue to talk the case and see where it goes. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I remember when she had said she was attacked. Hmm, Dylan's acquaintances. Interesting. Um, all right, so let's just get into it. I mean, where should we? I have notes. I know Amber has yeah. notes. <laughs> well, do you want? Did you take notes on the Facebook one? Because I didn't watch that. That one, I didn't really take notes. Basically, all he said in that one was is that um, Chris told him that NK showed up that night and basically asked him to pick between him and his family and that Chris wanted to choose his family. And then he said that's basically all he could say um, on it. But that he definitely thinks Chris, he called him his brother, that Chris is not a monster and the media is wrong about him. Um, so that's all he really said in Facebook. He did not go very deep Mm -hmm. into it. And he also in Facebook said no one should be making money like AD doesn't talk to Chris. Again, I'm just repeating and that um, if you want the truth, he has the truth for free kind of thing. So, yeah. And uh, what was I going to say about that? Oh, basically when he says that the media has Chris wrong, I'm curious what everyone's um, opinion on that is in chat. So if you think that the media has portrayed Chris incorrectly, press one. If you think the media has portrayed Chris as is and it is what it is, press two. Yeah, I'm curious about that too. And yeah, he does say Chris is innocent. One thing that I have not heard is um, if he like, 
what exact knowledge he thinks he has. Um, I know he was asked if Chris has memory loss and he said, no, he does not have memory loss, but there are some things that he just doesn't know and some things that just didn't happen. And that's all I can say. So I think that they think Chris, it, you know, Dylan thinks Chris is innocent at the physical murders, but beyond that, you know, letting in Kate in all that type of thing. I'm not, he hasn't really stated where he stands on that, that I have heard anyways. Um, yeah. He said, um, doesn't think Chris is guilty based on his knowledge and his character. Yeah. So whatever they've shared with each other, um, that's the conclusion that Dylan has come up with about Chris. Right. And Wendy's, is this the first time he has spoke out or the newest? As far as I know, this is the newest. Um, any, th any other things that we've heard from Dylan were through um, his girlfriend or fiance at the time. So, but as far as I know, I mean, this is the first time Dylan has spoken out. And it's hard to say because people are um, questioning how he says that Chris is um, innocent. It's hard to say exactly what maybe he thinks he's in innocent of. Like if they're talking about doing the physical murders themselves, maybe that's what Dylan is saying. No, he didn't do that. So I don't really know the, um, the scale of what he's saying Chris is guilty or innocent of. I think that it'd be really unusual for anyone to think that Chris was a hundred percent innocent. So that to me is, I'd like to know more about like what, what he specifically thinks he's innocent or guilty on. You're back. Yeah. I, someone said my sound was kind of cutting out. So I left and came back. <laughs> if mine cuts out as well, let me know guys. And I swear, I think StreamYard has issues also. I mean, there's so many people who report like it's fine on a different kind of platform, but then they get on StreamYard and it gets glitchy. I believe it. I mean, it's just computer software. I'm sure it's not paired correctly or something. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, if he didn't kill them, then who did? I don't believe he's innocent. Right. And I mean, there are a lot of theories on that. Um, But technically, you know, we haven't gotten any kind of, um, you know, they haven't released to us any DNA forensic evidence linking Chris as the sole one who did this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what people need to remember. And it's not us proclaiming, see, he didn't do it. They didn't show us DNA. But I think that it's fair to question, especially this being a plea deal and not a real trial. You know, what exactly physical DNA, what exactly physical evidence do they have? Um, and what could they have proven during the trial if it took place? It's just very interesting. And that's why I think that this keeps going on and on for um, people like myself and you, CDT, because we don't have the trial where we can be like, oh, wow, yep, this is the results from the lab. And, you know, no denying this, no denying that. We don't have that. So it has nothing to do with being um, obsessed with the case, like in a, in a way that like we can't do other cases. Like we jump and do other cases. We've always looked into other cases, but this one, I mean, it's just sets it apart from all the others. We don't have the trial. Right. Um, and someone asked about David Carter. He was asked about David Carter and he claims that he was on the unit with them for a little bit and that all that they weren't close, really, that Chris gave uh, the gospel to David and David asked Chris for some females to write. And then Dylan said he told Chris, like, David isn't cool. So it sounds like, you know, David wasn't really tight with them. Yeah. Yeah, it was. He said that's the right also, word. Um, yeah. He was commenting about people that were um, mentioned as well as Anna. He mm -hmm. even said something about um, she still loves Chris. Yeah. And then he said, 
something about like I don't talk to my buddy's exes or something. Yeah. <laughs> so so like... that's the thing about this interview is it was really interesting on so many levels, like about the crime, about his relationship, friendship with Chris, and then also the things that kind of slipped out in a way, I guess you could say. And mm -hmm. I think that like he wasn't really supposed to make that comment about Anna. But yeah, he was like, yeah, I don't make it a habit to talk to my friend's exes, but she's okay. She's cool people or whatever. And it was like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. Take it for what it is, but watch the interview yourself. He did say that he thinks Anna is still in love with him. So I don't know. Yeah. And yeah, I referred to her as an ex. <laughs> so um, no, uh, did he talk about Heather? I don't remember him being asked about Heather. I do know he was asked about AD. He did not mention her, but I will say one thing he said I have in my notes. Um, Chris talks to a handful of people and AD is not one of them. He talks to his mom, dad, Jamie, Dylan himself, and maybe one or two other friends. No one on YouTube. He stays low key. And this is direct quotes from Dylan who, you know, was friends and is friends with Chris and they still talk to this day. So take that for what you will believe what you guys want, but that's what he had said. Mm -hmm. Someone said, who did the interview? It was on a channel. Who runs that channel? She has been in contact um, with Dylan for a little while and he did the er, interview with her. Yeah, so they he didn't say he does talk to Heather. He he didn't say he does not talk to Heather. He did say the last time he spoke to Cato was in 2019. Mm -hmm. so but that's yeah, that's that's all we know from somebody who 100% talks to Chris. Like I believe that Dylan still talks to Chris and that he obviously was friends with him in prison. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't speak for other people, but that's just what he said. And he doesn't talk to anybody on YouTube. Right. Yep. And then is Lana helping him with a case of his own? I don't know. I did hear her mention like, I gotcha kind of thing. Um, so maybe, I don't know. I know that according to them, they do talk quite a bit. So maybe. Um, right. So the nature of a killer is that they are going to need to lie a lot and keep secrets, but killers still have to be interviewed by police and media to try to get info out of them. Over and over. Um, that Chris is a liar. You know, do you believe every single word of his first confession or first interview? Okay. Do you believe every single word of his second one in Dodge? Like we all, pick and choose what we believe from Chris. Um, you know, I think everybody does it to some level. We have to with all the lies and different narratives he's uh, given. Yeah, that the idea of Chris being a liar, no, Dylan is out agrees of with. Yeah, he just yeah, got oh, out. Yeah. Um, and again, as of now, everybody like, you know, has who's come out and so far I have found Dylan to be the most credible. That's where I stand right now. Um, I understand, you know, he's a convict. He's been in and out of prison for years. Um, but I don't know. He just seems like he wants it to be out there that Chris didn't act alone and that Oh, he did say in his Facebook thing, he believes, yeah, that there are other, that there are, I don't remember if he said killers or killer, but he said that there's like bad people walking free, basically. And that we should be concerned, especially in Colorado. So, I mean, again, take it how you will. Mm -hmm. And he was, I believe, in prison for nonviolent offenses. I think it was. Um, yeah, alien. I think it, drugs and then drug related. Did, he said there was one incident with a gun type thing. I don't know. It yeah. And it wasn't anything like he killed anybody. So I don't know. I just think it's interesting. Right. Um, 
because like, why were they so, that's what my fiance and I were wondering, like he has nonviolent charges and then he's very close to, I don't know if they were cellmates or whatever, or just near each other. It was just kind of weird how they like integrated them. Yeah, he was making it sound like that he wasn't ever technically an inmate at Dodge. Like he was just kind of being held at Dodge for a little while. And um, it they were having problems. Dylan was a problem prisoner. He kind of admitted that. And that um, so they put him in a single cell. He was never in the same cell as Chris, but it was when Chris was still in a single cell. He did say that, yes, now he has a roommate. But it was when um, they were in a single cell and his cell was by Chris's. And they went, he knocked on the wall, asked him his name, and it started the relationship. Very interesting, I think. Just because, I mean, we're all here, you know, obviously, as Chris would say, on the outside. Yeah. And we don't know, like, we know that he's in prison and, and we all have, like, the you know, assurance that he's not anywhere else, you know, in the world, he's just sitting there in prison. So it's just very interesting to me getting this um, information from somebody who was in there with him on the day to day basis, like playing basketball together. And Mm -hmm. um, he had said that Chris didn't want to go to general um, population. Uh, He wanted to wait until Dylan was already out. But it ended up happening before Dylan got out, but they kept in contact with letters weekly. Yep. Yeah. Um, Yeah, he said, you know, we talked about his case, he said a thousand times and that Chris would still refer to Shanann as his wife, like his wife and kids. Um, But yeah, Dylan is out of jail now. Um, so, okay. I thought this was interesting. So she asked him, does he speak to NK? And he said, he doesn't think so that it was a lady named Becky who wrote and said, Nikki misses you. And Dylan told Chris, Hey, I think that that is NK and Chris ripped up the letter. So that's all he said in regards to does he talk to NK. Lana did get lawyers for Chris and she has phone recording speaking to them. Yeah. And that's again, Dylan, another thing um, he did say, he mentioned lawyers that he did have lawyers, but not anymore. He said, um, okay, now this one's kind of a big one again, if you believe it or not. um, He said, Colorado should have done their job. When they swept the house, they found evidence of four people. They found four other people's DNA in the house. And he said they found that last year, but he doesn't have, or the lawyers found that last year, but he doesn't have lawyers anymore. Did you hear that too, Amber? Yeah, I have the quote, but he don't have them lawyers anymore. However, they're going to figure out something soon. Hmm. So again, take it how you will. But I mean, what do you think about the DNA thing? Well, I think that that is, I I can't believe that's not being like spoken about like on everybody's YouTube and maybe even mainstream media. I mean, if he's insinuating that four other people's DNA was found through the house and that the, um, some legal team he was working with last year were the ones to find that. I think, I mean, that's like red flags, but at the same time, didn't surprise me because Mm -hmm. it it makes complete sense to me. Like, of course there's other people's DNA in there. Like they, I think there was some staged home invasion type thing. Um, I'm just responding in chat. Yeah, I know. And that's the thing, like it, and I get it. Like people are like, well, how can you believe what Chris says at this point? Of course he wants to get out. It's like, Yes, that's fair to say, okay? But at the same time, like, who, um, who's to say he's not telling the truth now, you know? Um, yeah. You know. And, like, honestly, I don't know. I thought for a while, you know, all last year in 2019 that he does want to get out. But at this point, I feel like he's accepted that, like, he's going to be in there. Like, I feel like he's okay with prison life. I think that he 
is like um, embracing it in a way like um, Mm -hmm. with his routine and stuff like that. So I don't think that Chris is doing this type of stuff um, and saying certain things nowadays to get out of prison. I think that he's probably realizing that his side and story never got told because he didn't want to face it because he's a wimp basically in, in a trial. And he even says to them in prison interview, like, I didn't want other people to have to deal with this, blah, blah, blah. You know, and it, it was, just, I just think that at this point, he's okay with being in prison, but he's also going to use all this to kind of drag things on. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like it's just a part of his daily routine now. And he's going to get uh, legal advice and stuff like that. And this is just going to be his new prison life. Like he's going to deal with being in prison for life. He's accepting it. But he's also got extracurricular activities, I feel. And he's like, yeah, why not? I'm already in here. Like what can happen to me at this point? That's just my opinion, obviously. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I say, hey, Robbie. And okay, now this is something else that Amber and I have spoken about is, you know, people are like, well, why hasn't he gone to the police? Like, why? I mean, does his, has he not told his family? And Dylan said, you know, what do you tell your family versus your friends? And I have kind of said this too. I feel like if Chris is ever going to start giving a different narrative or implicating other people, the first place he would probably do it is to They have all the time in the world, not much to do other than write and talk and work out. So if he's starting to feel connected with this Dylan guy Mm -hmm. and they're speaking the Bible, speaking that you need to speak the truth, et cetera, that's just me. I mean, I think it it is very possible that he did tell him Mm -hmm. the truth. He even says, and this is the quote, Cindy still asks Chris to tell them more. Mm-hmm. So I 100% agree that obviously he's telling a confidant in prison much more than he's going to tell his family, which makes sense. You know, like you and I tell each other things that we don't tell our family, I'm sure. It's just kind of common. Yeah. And I almost feel like when they talk about the books that they're work- working on together and they've written seven volumes and, you know, a devotional book type thing too like I don't know exactly the details on it but Mm -hmm. I mean they might Chris might be at the point where he's like if I'm going to tell stuff you know I'm going to get not that he can make money off of all this but I think that he's after being screwed over by Cato I think that he's going to move differently as far as things he reveals and what is Mm -hmm. revealed and how it's revealed yeah and who it's revealed to Mm mm-hmm um, yeah, and that's another thing now going around that he handed Bella off to somebody. Um, again, that's not something that Dylan has said, but it's like, I mean, Dylan has said that there are some things he doesn't know. And when Lana, um, Amber and I did a live responding to Critical K's interview of Lana, and she said, Critical K kept saying, why don't they ask their son the truth? Why don't they ask their son to tell him the truth? And Lana said, well, when you don't know everything, you know, and so it's like, maybe he doesn't. I mean, it's just still, I'm not, we're not trying to get into theories in this live, but you know, a lot of our thoughts about all this. So. Yeah. I have the quote somewhere about memory loss. Um, Yeah. <clears throat> and then we'll get into um, how they call her Jezebel. We were going to kind of look up what some sources say it, uh, Jezebel was like. I think it's interesting that even uh, Dave, um, Dylan referred to her as Jezebel. Mm hmm. Yeah, I saw that. He said Cindy gave him 500 to buy stuff, and he got um, shoes, I think he said, too. Yeah, as far as the Jezebel stuff, I have that that's how um, Dylan and Chris would refer to NK, like when they were, and it says, quote, when they would talk about legal stuff. So why, I'm questioning, like, why are they talking about yeah. legal stuff with each other? 
And why is she involved? Right. She's like, never involved in all the legal stuff we know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, Lana is just the person who did the interview. Um, I'm not, I'm, we're more focused on who she interviewed his words. Um, but yeah, I mean, everyone is free to listen to the interview. It's linked. Take it how you will. Um, yeah, it's a spirit. It's in the Bible. Yeah. Ados. So that's another thing we want wanted to touch on the channel seeking the truth with Dave claims um I think it's 8 p.m eastern that there's some breaking news um are those the sirens there's the sirens they're now. coming for her <laughs> yeah here they are live no but um so you know I'm gonna be following that I'm curious what he has I don't know so yeah I told Dave I was excited to see what's going on obviously Mm -hmm. <laughs> anything yeah. that happens in the case you know any new developments i think everybody can't deny they'll be interested in and then you can choose to believe what you want or if, if proof is shown even better yeah and here's the thing i just don't think it's um completely 100 percent fair to just totally write off what Chris says now, because it's like, I understand, yes, he's lied. But at the same time, I mean, Amber and I have deeply gone through the interviews, the discovery, the um, co-workers, just everybody. And it's like, what he has said in both of his interviews, like his August and his um, February, don't, that doesn't fully match the evidence. So while, mm -hmm. you know, people will say, well, just because he comes out and says, in Hey, did it like why do you believe that and it's like i don't like if there were to be um stuff coming out why can't we at least consider it and try to work through it in our minds and see where it goes you know right and i did find my notes of, well and just to extend on that i um concept of chris how can we believe what he says now he's a known liar but the same people who say they're not going to believe Chris now are the same ones that believe the prison interview and every, uh, his other quote unquote confessions, which everyone remember the first confession was, which no one here, I don't think believes that Shanann killed the kids. So when people say he confessed, it's like, do you even remember what, cause the plea deal isn't in a confession. Like it's not a verbal, like he signed it. Yes. But I mean, those are terms and conditions. Um, mm -hmm. so for people to question his truth, you know, I understand that. I also think, well, then how can you not question what he said in the past? You know, it's just, you can't have it both ways. You can't believe certain things and everyone kind of does this anyways, but you know, it's just interesting the people, what people choose to believe, I guess. And, the um, note that I had written about, um, the interviewer asking if there's memory lost, he said, no loss of me no memory loss, but there is some not knowing. So I don't know what people think about that, but yeah, yeah, there is some not knowing, and then there's some things that didn't happen. So I guess he thinks maybe some things Chris said didn't right didn't happen, <clears throat> and um, which kind of goes into him saying media got him wrong, right. Right. Yeah. Media got him wrong. Yeah. And that's what he said. And then uh, let's see. Yeah. Another thing after he mentioned that they found four other people's DNA in the house, which, okay, go back to the Dodge interview. He is Tammy and Coda were like, there was a lot of activity in the basement. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what, do they know? And then it's like, then they sway away from the basement. It's all just odd. Um, yeah, they do kind of skim over the basement stuff. And uh, Baumhofer gives the wrong Vivint time. He yeah. said, no, it just seemed like there was uh, an alert that happened at 426. And, it, you know, if you go to Discovery and you actually research, you realize, like, no, it was 526 in the morning, not 426. So right, right. take that for what you will. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, so another thing, after he said that, he mentioned he doesn't found 
the last year doesn't have lawyers anymore. And then he kind of mumbled, that's kind of like what I'm doing. So it just makes me wonder if, um, if, you know, Dylan is trying to help Chris um, with lawyers. I don't know. Um, hey, doing life my way. It's me and Amber. She changed her picture. So I've seen a couple people or I think one other person wasn't sure. But yeah, this is Amber. Yeah, the pink hair was temporary. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, yeah, as far as the we're helping him with legal stuff, I have. Um, he's on, or Dylan said that he's under contract, so he can't comment on certain things. And then he said, as far as legal stuff, um, the Jezebel stuff, he said that's what they would refer to her. Um, then says, no, wait, no, I can't say that. This stuff is going to be in court. So there's some things I can't mention. No one really knows this stuff. But once it's exposed and then it was like inaudible because he got cut off by the um, interviewer. So. Right. I know. Yeah. And my heart to yours, no, to our knowledge, right, Amber? I mean, they never checked the pipes that we know of. Oh, no, there's no record of mm -hmm. an investigation with the pipes. It's only mentioned after the um, everything's pretty much shut down, which was weird because if you, which we were, we are going to relook at um, the Wisconsin interview, he just mentioned the pipes out of nowhere. Like it wasn't like they were talking about plumbing or even the bathroom being locked or the bathroom toilet being dry. Like it had nothing to do with all that. It was just, he wanted to know if the water was off or has anyone right. checked the pipes? What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then under contract, did you notice Amber, how he sometimes said under contract? I think he's like, must be under contract with possibly people magazine or something. I think that, they're like wanting to interview him that could be or maybe and even no, lifetime has said you're giving us this information oh. don't give it to anybody else i mean i don't know maybe it's about books that he's writing with chris that they have already like legal stuff worked out i'm not really sure that it, we were kind of wondering your guys's thoughts on the, the contract talk yeah i think that could be it like lifetime possibly and no, Dylan and Chrissy are no longer together. Uh, let's see. I think it was more to do with the sprinklers. Yeah, I'd have to re-listen. It's been a long time. I think I have that in a video um, where, because. Yeah, agree, Mama Bear. Okay, what did they ever do with the master control panel? I don't know. All that, it was um, sealed, right? Like the Vivint, they never the released Vivint records from the control panel is sealed. And then it had said on the top of the page, which is, this is all in discovery, that um, at the time that it was sealed, that it would be unsealed after 90 days. They were kind of keeping it sealed in case it went to trial so that that information just, you know, wouldn't get out there or maybe even to the defense side. Um, you know, they were keeping that kind of protected for a trial incident, but then it never went to trial, as everybody knows. So those 90 days actually expired. So they should have been unsealed in my understanding of it. But obviously, when they gave us the discovery, they gave us the discovery um, not after the, that 90 day period. So it was released to us and then not the extension of all the files. I mean, let's face it, we don't have DNA, we don't have pictures, we don't have a lot in this case. So the Vivint records are one of them. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that just be so, so interesting to be able to read through those? Because why are they saying, yeah, it showed that there was a lot of activity in the basement but yet mm -hmm. yeah the discovery was a joke like it's oh almost 2,000 pages well no um a lot of it gives nothing and honestly there's uh there is evidence that people overlook in this case and a lot of it has to do with the Vivint and the DDoS attacks on the router and the wi-fi at the time and that was happening to the Watts home um, 
I think a lot of people, including myself, don't really even understand what a DDoS attack is. And Mm -hmm. um, it's taken this long to kind of, even for my fiance, who's studying computer science, for him to say, you know what, those attacks were kind of random. You know, for for him to come out and say something about the case, you know, it means a lot because he's got to hear me talk about it. And a lot yeah. of times I'm sure he's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. But he had come out and said, <laughs> you know, that is kind of weird that their Wi-Fi was being attacked like that. Because basically what it is is something that can disrupt your computer. Like, and I'm going to break it down in like real simple terms. Like, explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old, like on The Office. <laughs> Your favorite gift. (laughs) So basically, the DDoS attack just interrupts your um, Wi-Fi flow. Like basically, it disrupts it and um, overloads it with like all this stuff so that it doesn't work properly. It floods your computer with instructions that your computer wasn't meant to be doing anyway. So it's just very random. And honestly, I think it's very uh, overlooked. And it's suspicious because now the Vivint records, I'm wondering if the DDoS attacks, you know, uh, inhibited things. And like, it just, we really need to look more into at what time did these attacks happen? What wasn't recorded during that time that it happened? I mean, if somebody's going to go into somebody's house and do something, a DDoS attack is perfect because it, their security system will not work. Um, the Alexa that people say, did it record things on the Alexa during this? Um, we wouldn't know if there was a DDoS attack that disrupted even that, you know, there are a lot of things that could have been purposely disrupted by people. And that's why Tammy, if you watch the polygraph, she asked Chris his knowledge and his experience in computers. And to me, I think it's because they knew about these attacks and they knew that, it takes a certain person to kind of be able to do that to somebody's um, Wi-Fi and computer and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's in the discovery, but like you said, most people, including myself kind of look at it and you're like, eh, move on, you know? So it's over my head. I know. Yeah. It's like computer codes. Like you look at it and you're like, okay, but Tammy specifically says, Mm -hmm. so you can't like code like they talk about computer coding during the interview and 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 you have to pay attention to what they're being asked and same with the wisconsin interview why are they asking certain things over and over and we'll get into that eventually right and i see this yeah soul for music why doesn't chris watts talk um i don't know if he's nervous like I don't, I wonder that too. But yeah, we need to get into that. Maybe um, your fiance can come, <laughs> you can convince them to try to explain it. And like, we can show it on the screen, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think that would need its whole video for itself to kind of focus on that. Sorry yeah. to even go off on it, but if we we're going to talk about the DNA that Dylan is saying was found in the house, I mean, there's so many things, and Chris mentioning the pipes, there's so many things that we just don't know and have been overlooked that I think actually matter. And, you know, there's more to it basically. Yeah. I agree. So, now, did you want to look up the um, Jezebel thing that you thought? Yeah. Kind of interesting. I thought so too. So, and again, even on the show, the friends speak, didn't they refer to her as Jezebel as well? Yeah. So, like, that is a known name for her. Um, let me look that up. Okay, another thing before we do that I wanted to say is that Dylan did say, now this is kind of towards the end, that um, they were leading Chris with the questions. Instead of asking him, what did you do or what happened, they were like, well, when you did this, when you did that, that they were leading. And that's something that Amber and I still want to do is go over the prison interview focusing on the questions, not Chris's answers, but the questions that Tammy Baumhaver and Coder asked. Um, yeah, because, and everyone agrees, uh, that interview was very random and very strange. You know, they cut everything, closed it up and put them away, sent them to Wisconsin. 
So then why a few months later is the FBI and CBI and the detective, you know, there? I think that it needs to be relooked at as far as the questions um, and why law enforcement would feel the need to ask those questions after everything's been shut down and closed. Yeah. Yeah. And that was actually Amber's idea. Um, so it was a very good idea to think of it that way. Cause that was one of the, that's what I started this channel doing was listening to Chris's prison interview and commenting on it. Um, and I was not focused on the questions. I was focused on the answer. So focusing on the questions would be very interesting. Um, but Dylan also said that Chris was shown, shown pictures of his deceased family and, um, <laughs> the way that he made it sound was he was talking about that interview, the prison interview. And then he's like, yeah, and they showed him pictures of his family, you know, deceased. So that's according to Dylan. And again, I, I do believe um, definitely that there are parts of that prison interview that are redacted. Um, so, yeah the prison interview and the polygraph interview. I think that there's parts rejected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's one thing he had said. So before we go to Jezebel, I'm just looking over one more time. Um, so I, basically, ha I have a lot of notes too still. Okay. Yeah. So do you want, I'll do Jezebel and then we'll just go over more of the notes real quick. I'm going to share. Now, this is from Christianity.com. So I feel like it's a pretty reliable source. Um, I grew up going to a Catholic school, but honestly, like I, as an adult, I don't really know the Bible very well. And even going through Catholic school, I zoned a lot of it out because um, it was so pushed on me that as a kid, yeah, I was same. like, okay, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I didn't go to Catholic school like you, but it was definitely pushed on me. And oddly enough, um, I was raised Baptist, just like Chris Watts was. So when he talks about the Bible and being Christian yeah. and this and that, it frustrates me because I'm like, you don't lead a Christian life. Like, tell the truth, basically. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, he did. Dylan, again, you can believe Dylan or not, but this is what he said in the interview that, yes, Chris was shown pictures of the family deceased. Um, and he, Dylan did not say that parts were adapted. I said that, but yeah, Dylan did mention that. Um, and then he also was saying that they led him with the questions instead of leaving them open ended. Like what happened? They said, when you did this, when you did that. And it's interesting to get Dylan's perspective on that because obviously he's been questioned by law enforcement before, you know? Mm -hmm. So he's yes. probably thinking about his own experience and he's like, wait, what? Like, no, Colorado didn't do their job. They fed him answers. They were leading this and that. Like, and, and think about it. He's been in the shoes as far as a legal process. So he's probably looking at it at like, why was I treated this way? And then they're giving him the answers or, you know, maybe he didn't think it was fair because of his case or he didn't think it was fair because of, I mean, he obviously doesn't think it's fair for Chris, you know, so it's just interesting that they've probably shared their experiences and been like, that's not what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I agree. Prison religion is super, super normal and common that they get in there. They read the Bible. They, you know, that's what takes over their life because that's all they have. They have the chapel. They, um, Chris apparently likes to basically uh, share the word and the gospel with people. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. very common. Um, and Dylan, when they talked about Cato, he basically said, like, she came in like a missionary. Like, she made it yeah. seem like, you know, they were going to talk devotionals and this and that. So I definitely got the vibe from Dylan that he was not happy that, Cato kind of portrayed herself one way and then it turned into something else from what he gathered from Chris. Yep. And then, so she did ask, should NK be looked into? And he said, I don't want to comment on that. So it's like, if he didn't think so, he would just say no. Um, but he was really kind of being careful. And a few times he kind of caught himself when he felt, I guess, like he was over speaking a little bit. Um, 
So, you know, take it for how you will once again, but. Yeah. Um, and since we're going to talk about the Jezebel thing and it has to do with character, um, Chris, basically um, Dylan was saying that he, as in Dylan, would always complain that, you know, people would judge him on his past. And that's what I think a lot of um, people who've been in legal issues or, you know, it could be anything in life, really. Like you're frustrated that you're being treated a certain way because of what they know about what you've done, you know? So I can understand Dylan complaining like that to Chris. And then he said that um, Chris said, I wish people would judge me on my past. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because, and even the interviewer said, this is interesting because, you know, he, everyone who was close to Chris, as far as like Mark, his friend and people who worked with him and stuff like that, they had nothing but good things to say. So it's very um, intriguing that he would, Chris would say like, well, I wish people would judge me on my past, but unfortunately consequences and, you know, he made a life decision. Now he's living with it and your past isn't going to matter. It's just kind of ironic that like somebody like Chris who wants his past to be, you know, the way people see him, it's like, no, you, you lost that. Right. And Dylan, you know, he's trying to do better, it seems. And he's frustrated that everyone just sees him as his past. So it's just kind of it's a way that they've probably bonded and stuff. It's just really fascinating to me. Yeah, it is. I thought that little exchange was interesting as well. Um, so is it true in case father worked for Anadarko? From all we've heard, no, that is not true. He was an electrician, right? In case dad or an electrical engineer or something. I think he was He's an, an engineer. Okay. But no, I, I've never found any merit that he worked for Anadarko. Right. I, I don't see any connection to that. I know. There should be a support group for the significant others of people obsessed with this case, right? Yeah. A dating um, app. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, my husband, I mean, he's just knows it's a part of me at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, Dylan was saying that he thought it was um, surprising that they got so close because they came from totally different upbringings. Um, what else? He's never seen Chris cry about the family or the crimes, but quote, he knows when something is up. So I don't know if that insinuates some days are worse than others for Chris. Not sure. Which yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't have sympathy for, but it's interesting to see like, you know, how is his mood? Yeah, because he said he did, hasn't seen him cr or heard him or seen him cry, but that he knew when something was going on or whatever. And no, we have not talked to Dylan Tallman. We're just commenting on an interview he did. Okay, so yeah, Mama Bear says there's no background with um, him working at Anadarko. Thank you, Mama Bear. But yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay. In my no, notes, I, I, that's really it. I don't. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe that he had previous Trent, I think Trent was sent in from NK. I think Amanda just wanted attention kind of thing. That's just my opinion. That I don't. I agree. I don't think there were other affairs. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me pull this up. because that's another thing like people are like why won't Chris just talk why won't he tell the truth like who's to say that Chris hasn't told Dylan the truth and that it is true that um he lol he did work as a contractor but okay so are you saying that he maybe contracted for Anadarko but oh, I don't that'd think be interesting to see the proof on that because I like mama bear was saying that we've never seen a connection to Anadarko Mm -mm. But yeah, that'd be interesting to see that connection prove proven if it was there. We're just saying we have not seen it in our research of it. Um, what's clickbaity? No, I mean, we said that he spoke out. We never said our title does not say Watts case. We spoke to Chris's prison buddy. We said 
Watts case, prison buddy speaks out because he did. <laughs> he spoke out on another channel, which is linked in the description. So I don't really find that clickbaity. If you do, that's your opinion. But um, see, that's yeah. the thing too <laughs> is um, when people see a title, I would just recommend that you also scroll down into the description box. It's why um, creators take the time to write something out in the description because it kind of extends on the title. To, so to break it down for people who think, you know, that's clip, clickbaity, before you say that, can you look down and see? And yes, it was that specific creator, but this is about somebody who she talked to that's close to Chris. So as we study the case for Chris, we will talk, about people who have talked to Chris. And in the beginning of the live, we've also mentioned that this specific person who's talked to Chris, Dylan, he's gonna be on the Lifetime Network. So if you wanna tune into that, he talked to Lifetime, unless you don't like Lifetime, like you don't like that other creator, which is fine. You know, We're not telling you to watch that other creator. We're not telling you to watch Lifetime. You can choose to watch what you want. If you don't like it, you can also choose to click out but yeah, in her description, um, CDT went to the extent to explain that we're talking about the prison friend who spoke out and then she links the description of the other channel that he spoke out on. So before you you know, accuse my friend here of clickbait, which if you go to her channel, you won't find a single video that's clickbait. So please look into the description box. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Yeah. And that's one thing we really try not to be clickbait or to lie or twist anything. Like we just want to report on the Watts case and other cases. It happens to be the Watts and um, it happened on that channel. And that's that. So uh, you can be disappointed. You can think it's clickbait. That's fine. We're just going to continue on. Okay. Um, so. So Let's she, um, somebody asked, who is Jezebel? Um, the mistress. That's who they, ref Chris and Dylan and other people have referred to the mistress. Yeah, that's like their nickname for the NK. Um, okay, so we're just going to, I'm going to share my screen and just pull up something that um, Christianity.com mentions about a Jezebel. Hey, BS detector. Um, okay, so let me do the, yeah, someone, we won't even go back, but yeah, said our title was clickbait because we didn't actually speak to Dylan, but we never claimed to, so. Yeah, and, detector. Yeah, and in the um, interview, she did um, kind of quiet him, and I don't know what that was about. There were a few times um, that I feel he should have, or, you know, I wish that she would have let him talk a little bit more, but what, you know, I, I still found a lot of interesting tidbits from the interview for sure. Um, thank you, Nicole Morgan. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And that's one thing. We don't want to do that. I mean, we're not here to do that. Um, so, but thank you for saying that and for the donation. It's very much appreciated. No, this guy did not talk to AD. The one who has spoken to AD was David Carter, not Dylan. Okay, so let me share my screen. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure, yeah, some of you have probably, you know, know the Bible and know about Jezebel. Um, but if you don't, this is what they call NK. This is how they even referred to her on um, the Friends Speak episode, which that has been probably a year or so ago. I can't remember the network it was on, but Okay, so this is from Christianity.com, and it says, Who was Jezebel in the Bible? What was she really like? And I thought this first quote was really interesting. So it says, Queen Jezebel was the daughter of Ethabal, king of Sidon, and the wife of Ahab, king of Israel. Jezebel promoted the worship of false gods in Israel, harassed and killed God's prophets, and arranged for an innocent man to be falsely charged and executed. Again, we're not saying that Chris is completely innocent, but say Chris didn't physically commit the murders. And 
and that, you know, another person or group of people did. Um, it's just something to think about. It's just interesting that they refer to her like this. Um, I'm going to find some more. Hang on on her. Or on Jezebel. But what do you guys think about um, them referring to her as Jezebel? Jezebel's spirit. Yeah. I think it's very, <clears throat> it's very old term. <laughs> like it just sounds like something that somebody's old grandmother would refer to some floozy as. Yeah. And I do want to say that is true. I said that Dylan has not spoken to AD, but yeah, Chrissy has spoken to AD and said she was talking from Dylan, basically. So I guess, yeah, in a roundabout way, you could say that he has. Um, <laughs> dramatic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just meant like what the way I was thinking of it was like Dylan has not been on AD's channel since he's been out of prison kind of thing. But yeah, you yeah. Know that. Leah Free said, wow, I didn't know the history behind that name. I thought that was really interesting, honestly, when you take in consideration the details. Mm -hmm. And I don't and know, it's just weird. Yeah, she took John the Baptist's head wanting for a birthday present. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dylan did say David kind of exaggerated and um, wasn't close with them, that he first shared the gospel with David and that David wanted females to write. And then um, Dylan told him David isn't cool, basically. Like, he's not in our clique <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, I think that Jezebel is appropriate for the nickname. <laughs> mm -hmm. But think about it. When you make Nick, like, why are they making a nickname up for her? You know what I mean? Like, why not? If there's no animosity or there's nothing that should be, you know, strange between Chris and NK, like, why is there a nickname for her? Like, why can't he say her name? Like, I don't know. To me, maybe I'm looking into it too much, but it's like, I don't know. He obviously, mm -hmm. there's a disrespect between them for him to nickname her. Yeah. Yeah. He's not calling her like Mother Mary, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's not yeah. calling her a respectful name. Or he's not even referring to her as like the side chick. Yeah. You know, like I feel like guys, <laughs> <laughs> who knows, and girls, you know, they would refer to them as my side chick or my piece. Yeah, Whatever. I, my piece. <laughs> my piece on the side. I right. Know. I see what you're saying, though. And then for people who are so, I mean, that's all they have to do right now is the Bible. So for people who are so embedded in the Bible, that to use that name for her is just, again, interesting in my opinion. Yeah. Like my brother had a bad falling out and breakup last year, and he won't refer to um, her as her name he just says the ex did this or the ex the ex so it's just interesting that like you know once you start nicknaming people there was obviously something but he didn't have that kind of feeling in the prison interview so i don't know what's yeah become from that to now right like what changed mm-hmm and Cato did claim yesterday in her facebook group that the realtors for the Watts house called and asked if she was still interested in buying it. So take that for how you will. But somebody asked about Cato and that is, I'll read the post. Um, oh my God. Um, if I can find it, let's see. That would be crazy. She said, yeah, <laughs> I had a real estate agent contact me yesterday that I talked to about Christopher's house some time ago. She wanted to know if I'm interested in buying it. I would love to tear it down and make a little park or something. Um, and then another creator last night was in front of the house and the lights were on, which we did talk to Mexi. Um, he's spoken to neighbor Nate's mother, Vonda, who says that they do periodically turn the lights on in the house. So, Yeah. And soon Mexi will be releasing some stuff as far as his interview with Nate's mother. So look for that. But it's just, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. 
mm-hmm. if she bought that house, and this is just my opinion, I feel like she wouldn't even tear it down. I really feel like she would just like milk it. Like, do you want to see a tour of the basement? <laughs> like, I really think, sorry, that's just how I feel about her. Right. Yeah. And I think people would watch every step of the way if that were to actually happen. Yeah. And she would milk it. I'm going to mm-hmm. link Mexi's channel. It's not out yet, his interview, yeah. but he has said that he was working on it. Yeah. And um, Nate, mom has written a book. I have not read it, but she has. Um, yeah. So I set it up as an Airbnb, right? I mean, who knows what would happen? Somebody or CC said museum. <laughs> yeah. Just museum. And I'm, I hate to laugh. I'm not laughing at the idea of it being a museum or an Airbnb, but I'm laughing at the way that this specific person is. Right. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Kato, I haven't seen her on anywhere. I still am in her Facebook group because I'm very nosy. I like to be in the know. So, yeah, I'm in her Facebook group, but um, that's about it. Yeah. Um, So, anyway, I mean, just more about Jezebel, that the wickedest of women, she's been denounced as a murderer, prostitute, and enemy of God. Her name has been adopted for lingerie lines and World War II missiles alike. Um, she's a difficult woman. She's, it says Jezebel cannot even be compared with the Bible's other bad girls. So it's like she's the worst of the worst. Like he could have picked a different bad person, you know, bad woman's name from the Bible, but he went with Jezebel. Mm, that is interesting. Mm hmm. Yeah, these Somebody other- said earlier in chat, maybe she changed her name to Jezebel. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine walking around? She probably around? do the opposite and change it to Ruth. Yeah. Because Ruth is supposed to be like one of the best Christian women in the Bible, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, who knows? But I don't know. I know that at one point he... I can't remember where it came from, but yeah, he basically said NK is not a godly woman, which I think we could kind of figure that out on our own. Um, let me move this comment. Let's see better. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, and then <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> um, the documentary is called Cellmates. Cellmate Secrets is June 25th on Lifetime. Tonight is one about Drew Peterson. And I think Unmasked is having Drew Peterson's son um, on with for an interview. So I want to see that. That's interesting. Wait, is Drew the staircase guy? Because I know there's so many Petersons that are um, like, (laughs) I don't know what's with the name, but there's a lot of them. Yep. Um, I'm going to look. Oh, no, that's my fiance is correcting me. It's Michael Peterson is the good job. He knows his true crime. (laughs) Yeah, that I want you to watch that one. I know you haven't watched it yet. Um, I haven't. Okay, yeah. So unmasked tonight. He's the cop. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. Murdered two wives. What? Okay, that'll be interesting. I'll probably tune into unmasked and everyone else should too. Yeah. Uh, let's look up Drew Peterson. So yeah, basically he calls NK Jezebel the worst of the worst women of the Bible. So here he is and two wives. He was attacked by a prison inmate with a food tray. Good. He's serving 78 years for a murder and a murder for hire scheme. Wow. I would play this. I'd probably get a copyright thing. Yeah, this is different. The staircase one was what? Michael Peterson? Yeah. And then I think Unmasked is not Patreon because I'm not in their Patreon. But I think tonight it's not. Let me check before. 
Well, sometimes they will release, and if you're oh. on Facebook groups uh, after the Patreon, they'll release the link to the video and share it. So yeah. even if you're not in the Patreon, they'll still uh, release it. But some uh, Delaney, thank you. Not Patreon tonight. Mama Bear says unmask is Patreon. Okay. On yeah. Well, wait, no, it is. It says just. This one says, join us in Patreon this Saturday, 6, 12, 8, 30 Eastern for an interview with Drew Peterson. So, yeah, it okay. is Patreon tomorrow. Night. But still, if you want to join their Patreon, it's really, I mean, they have really good content. Yes. For sure. My friend Brooks always says it's worth it. Yeah. They get good interviews for sure. So, um, Yeah, I ha I'll have to check that out on Netflix about Michael Peterson because I have not. So, yeah, there's Drew Peterson, Michael Peterson, and Scott Peterson. Unbelievable. And speaking mm -hmm. of Scott Peterson, I'm going to be doing a live with CDT um, an extension and continuing the Scott Peterson case sometime next week. Yes. So I'll premiere it so you guys get a heads up. Yeah. And we are still undecided with the Scott Peterson case, in case anybody's interested on where we stand. So that's why we're just kind of going back through if anyone wants to join. Yeah. And I have people like Amanda um, Esvita, who you should check out as well, who thinks he's 100% guilty. And then I have other friends who think he's 100% innocent. So it, whether you think he's guilty or innocent, come join us and we'll just talk about it. Yeah, like either way, whatever you think, it's still interesting to discuss the case. Um, and they did, I know Amber had posted it, but yeah, they did, they were going to retry him for the death penalty, um, which would mean like a whole nother little presentation of evidence, a jury, um, but they decided life without parole and not retry that. He still is trying to use the habeas corpus to get a whole new trial, though. So that is still in the works. Um, time will tell on that. Um, so, yeah, uh, basically. Yeah, we do have the Twitter. I'm going to be honest. We run it with um, Alex Erickson. But I personally, I have not, I think. I haven't done anything on it. I've been really bad about that. But yeah, we do have a Twitter and an Instagram. Yes. So we're still. Um, for some reason, the format of Twitter does not agree with me. Like I just, I get me on there either. and I'm like, how do I use this? But yeah, we yeah. have it. Um, the name, what is the name of it again? Um, hold on. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> but anyways, we do have an Instagram too. So the Instagram is used more by myself, like every now and then. But yeah, find us on both, basically. And I'll link the Instagram one. Yeah, this one is Twitter. Name. Yeah, I never got Twitter until we did this. Okay, yes. Yeah. So the Twitter, you can find us at Unraveling Crime. Yes. And the Instagram is True Crime Exposing Injustices. And there's like underscores in between every word. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Delaney. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I follow it on YouTube and Facebook pretty much. Um, I don't use Instagram or Twitter. Never used Twitter before this. I have an Instagram personally, but I don't use that either. I'm mostly I'm a Facebook girl. So anyway, um, yeah, I did say with Alex. Yeah, we've the first time we talked to Alex was like over a month ago. Easily is when we started all this. So anyway, um. That's about it. So, oh, another thing I stuff when he was fighting, and then he kind of mumbled, "I'm not saying he's not." So it's like it, it's almost like, is he still fighting it? I don't know. Like, there's a lot of people who believe the 35C was never off, but then you have even Dylan kind of saying he doesn't have the lawyers anymore, 
and that's what I'm working on. But then he says, I'm not saying he's not fighting it. So maybe he doesn't have lawyers anymore, but he still wants to fight. I don't know. Um, and we don't want Chris to get out. That's not our MO here is free Chris. Chris is an innocent man. Chris was falsely, you know, falsely confessed to his coerced. Is if there is ever more evidence that other people were involved, um, then they should be brought to justice and we should be able to trust our legal system that they leave no stone unturned in cases like this. Mama Bear, I have heard of Reddit. I don't have an account or the Reddit app, but I've just learned about it through Google. Um, so... <laughs> well, I just want to thank everybody. And once again, I really appreciate all the support and love you guys are always giving us and new people who join. I want everyone to feel welcome and know that, you know, this is a safe place to talk and it'll always be true crime. Yeah, we that's what we are here for is the victims and discussions of crime. And just a place to yeah, come if you don't like I know Amber and I we don't agree with a lot of the way that the legal system works at times and so again it's so nice to have respectful people in chat who will be open-minded and chat with us about that you know mm -hmm. hi Dave G hello um yeah so it is called unraveling crime is the Twitter yep and um it's just mostly, it's used here and there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't expect daily updates, basically. If you want daily <laughs> updates, join our Facebook groups or find our community pages. And then kind of if we have extra time, we'll use Instagram and Twitter. Yep. Yeah, and I will link. We have the Chris Watts Facebook group. Amber started both of these. So we have that one, which is at what, like 13,000 people. And that's another thing with this case. like. Amber and I see it. People are joining all the time. Um, people are still very interested in this case. And there's going to be a lot of new people in this case once this lifetime comes out. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Um, when we have people join our Facebook group, I always have them do the questionnaires. Otherwise, you won't be accepted. Yeah. So in case anyone finds us, answer the questions. But um, uh, one of the questions is, how did you find our group? And it's always... I'm, well, not always, but I will say the majority of it is just people searching Chris Watts. So they're not coming to us because of finding us through mm -hmm. social media yeah. or on YouTube. They just said, like, they're type finding Chris us. Watts. Exactly. So that I'm just saying that the case isn't going anywhere. Um, it's only going to it's only going to grow. Um, we have a lot of questions still, so you can find Chris Watts content here and on my channel as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, all right. Well, yeah, that's about it. So again, yeah, he says he didn't act alone. Um, NK showed up that night and you have Chris saying in his own words, um, none of this makes any sense why she would be there. And it's like, why who would be there, Chris? They didn't ask him. Mm hmm. And the four separate DNAs in the house, I mean, that is a huge claim to throw out there. So I just want to leave it, I guess, on that note. Four other people's yeah. DNAs were found outside of the families in the Watts home. Mm -hmm. So again, take it how you will. The interview is linked below, so feel free to watch that. And we will talk again very soon. So look for things on my channel and Amber's channel. And um, thank you guys so much. Thanks to the mods. Um, I, I love that. Allegedly, um, all the donations, members, subs, everybody, just thank you. We really, really, really uh, care about you all and appreciate you all. So, yep. Incredible determination. Oh, thank you so much, B Wayne. Check that out. Um, it's going to be news to me as well. So, um, we will see. They say kiss yep. the baby, detective baby.
Yeah, I got to get to her. She's missing me. So. Yeah. All thanks, right, everybody. Guys. Yeah, thanks so much. Bye. Bye.